Imangaji has been called out. This is by far the most viral video I've ever seen about Imangaji, and he does. This guy does not say some positive things about him at all, and I'm sure he is uh, completely used to online haters or scammers or sorry, people calling him a scammer or whatever you want to call it. But I came across this video on TikTok. It's a 10 minute video, and it has over nearly has three, nearly 350 thousand likes, which is absolutely nuts. Um, and this guy is essentially calling out Iman Gaji. And, uh, well, I mean, we're going to watch the video together. We're going to jump straight into it now. And I'm going to show you what this guy has to say. So let's jump in and w watch this video. Okay, so I have literally waited my entire life to have a platform to expose the internet's most deceptive, prolific, and honestly, probably the most successful scam artist in the history of social media. And his name is Iman Ghazi. So as always, I have a master's degree in business and that's from a real university, not a bullshit Andrew Tate University, Iman Ghazi University, which we'll get into now. And I wanna discuss the dark marketing tactics, the evil, evil borderline criminal marketing tactics that this individual has used to successfully scam the internet, create a false perception of reality and con his way to being a multimillionaire. So Iman Ghazi is basically one of these financial influencers, if we wanna be polite in referring to him as that, who has basically sold a lifestyle to his followers that we know is not really attainable or realistic for the average person, and has presented this idea that the gateway to that lifestyle is by purchasing courses through him as someone who has been positioned falsely, of course, as an expert in the field of social media marketing and of building agencies. And the biggest scam is that he has quite literally never ran a successful agency in his entire life. The agencies that he has run, he's run into the ground and has failed at that. And the actual way and the means by which he has achieved this absurdly, obscenely wealthy lifestyle has actually been through selling courses based on this lie. So this is obviously, I don't think this is, um uncommon knowledge it's much easier to sell information than it is to build an agency growing agencies past a certain point is extremely uh, time intensive uh, it's a lo much lower margin than selling information and um, i have absolutely no doubt that uh, you know iman gaji's financial success has come primarily through selling courses or mentorship or something along that nature but let's let's carry on so I talk a lot about social media literacy, so I'm going to say this at the beginning of the video since it's the most important part and most of you will not make it to the end of the video. If you see somebody online who is flexing their lifestyle, bragging about the watch that they have, bragging about the Porsche that they drive, like that one girl who's like, I'm 23, I'm in a Porsche, we'll call her Scammer Barbie. Anybody who does that, when they are just for no reason at all, bragging about the material items that they have, what I want you to do is I want you to click their bio and if they have a course in their bio, they are a scam artist. So I agree. Like my biggest uh, pet peeve in like the business world is I have, cause I have no problem with courses, right? Um, I've bought Courtney. You know, I've learned a ton from online courses. Um, my biggest problem is when people leverage lifestyle and materialism to sell a dream or an outcome, because the vast majority of people who take these courses are not going to make their money back the vast majority are not going to succeed and not become going to become millionaires it's just simply not it's just to be too many people purchasing these kinds of courses for that to make any sense if he's making tens if not hundreds of millions of pounds you know it, it just doesn't it's just not you know it doesn't add up and of course they will always say yeah well it's up to you to put the work to build it of course but the reason they're buying it is because they're you're flashing this lifestyle that obviously everyone wants to get so i always recommend Follow people who put practical and knowledgeable information out there, educate for free. And if they have a course on the back, absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. But if they're leveraging materialism to try and sell a dream, always be wary because honestly, TikTok is a minefield for this stuff as well. That's rule number one. Rule number two, refer to rule number one. Start with the many lies of Iman Ghazi. And I'm using him as an example because he has been recently officially exposed by a journalist and lawyer of the name of Spencer Cornelia, and I highly recommend you watch his YouTube video on it, as it's an extremely detailed breakdown of some of the topics that I'm going to get into now. I did watch this video as well, and it was pretty interesting. Um, he goes through his businesses, and like obviously, if you're based in the UK, um, a lot of information is public, right? So, um, like his public um, business records are like on the internet, so you can actually go and see them. And in that video, it, it, it there's not much to show. 
right? Like he, a lot of the businesses are started and then closed relatively quickly. Um, the assets on file aren't, aren't particularly high. And obviously that's, that, that might not mean a huge amount. There might be stuff that you, not everything is shown, right? Like the, obviously there's things we don't know. Um, but like probably most likely um, the businesses were never as successful as he claims them to be. And it's much easier to, it's much easier to tell somebody you can help them make 10 grand a month if you're saying you've made a hundred grand a month or tell someone you can help them make a hundred grand a month if you're saying you've made a million dollars a month, right? But the vast majority of that isn't coming from the agencies because it's very difficult to scale an agency to that level. Um, you know, I would never say I've done something that I haven't done. I'll always just, you know, I always say publicly when I talk about, you know, growing like business advice or tips or online, I say, you know, these are the things that I've used and implemented, but I don't, you know, I don't know how to grow a business to a million dollars a month because I've never done it before. Now. But this is a formula that has been repeated by so many people online and I want it to be something that you guys are aware of so once you see it, you can block them, scroll away and hopefully not be part of the many hundreds of thousands of people that have lost tens of thousands of dollars due to this extremely predatory scam that is extremely common on social media, especially TikTok. So part of Iman Ghazi's and everybody in this category's marketing strategy, if we want to call it that, is the backstory. He tells this rags to riches story that he grew up extremely poor with a single mom and finally clawed his way to being a successful entrepreneur through hard work and drive. Well, what has been recently exposed really by him, because <laughs> he's said it in multiple podcasts, is in fact, he didn't grow up extremely poor. He actually grew up in the most expensive part of London and went to one of the top private schools in all of England because his mom actually remarried a billionaire who was his stepfather in his early years of life. Moved over there and took me with her and my stepdad, you know, it was like this like fairy tale, you know, my stepdad was quite wealthy, so. And he did end up dropping out of high school, but it's really not a rags to riches story. It's really a rich to richer story, which is obviously highly less marketable to the average person and the average desperate person that is somebody who consumes this type of content. So he sets the stage, right? I'm just like you, you're just like me. We both grew up poor and you can get rich just like I did, right? And the next step that they usually implement is something called lifestyle fabrication. So this is basically where you use social media as a tool to present highly idealistic forms of fantasy content and wealth to present to the audience as basically social proof that you've accomplished everything that you've said you've accomplished, that you're extremely successful, and that you are just this wealth of knowledge that is worth every single penny in the form of selling courses. Iman Ghazi specifically sort of rose to fame by advertising the idea that he became rich by being an agency owner, somebody that had a social media marketing agency that did a lot of Facebook and Instagram ads, things like that. Well, something that's been recently discovered is that despite the fact that he was saying he was making millions of dollars a month from that agency. He actually admitted on his own YouTube channel that he closed it down in 2022 because he just wanted to focus on other things. Um, ladies and gentlemen, there is nobody on this planet who would close down a business that was making millions of dollars a month in profit because they wanted to do something else. In that scenario, you would either sell the business because there's always somebody that's going to purchase a successful company or you would pay somebody else to manage it and just take some of the funds out yourself. I kind of agree with this. Um, even if he sold it for <clears throat> theoretically pennies on a dollar, right? Um, a business is doing a million a month. There's just very few people that wouldn't purchase that business. Um, and you know, there's plenty of purchase uh, business purchases, which are funded by an individual or like, you know, influencer, like look at like Vine Reynolds and the amount of businesses he's been involved in that he's later sold. <clears throat> Just because you're not in the business anymore doesn't mean you can't be a public face of that business and a lot of buyouts would include that within their terms so i actually do agree with this um i don't know the story the backstory of this i i'm relatively sure that he could probably find somebody to manage that agency for him probably the truth of the fact is that he probably wasn't making that revenue who knows and um it was just too easy making money through the course selling which is completely um understandable you know whether you agree with it or not it's completely understandable um, which is best to be honest. So I don't think I can possibly imagine a greater example of the low IQ level of his audience. The fact that this didn't raise a red flag. All of these alpha bro genius little boys didn't think it was bizarre that the person who's selling courses 
on how to run a successful agency just closed his down because he didn't feel like doing it anymore. And then if you want more proof of that, after the six years of his agency being open, it was called IMG Agency. It actually only had $200,000 in assets at the very end. So it was never a multi-million dollar agency to begin with. It in fact was a failure. So the- I, I don't necessarily think that's true. I mean, um, like assets on paper, it doesn't always tell you the truth, the full story, right? Like agencies are like, I mean, if you're doing a million dollars a month, then there's a good chance that you would have a heck of a lot more than $200,000 in assets, but he could have been drawing that out and um, keeping like a you know minimal amount of cash flow in the business. Who knows? Um, but like, I've never seen an agency that does that kind of revenue uh, who, that doesn't have dozens, if not hundreds of employees. Um, so the, I have to in, incline to agree with that statement. Um, but... I wouldn't take that as face value. Like, you know, who knows? The next dark side. And there's a chance that he may have done a million dollars a month in one month, once upon a time, and never did it again. And he can claim that he had a you know, million dollar a month agency. A lot of people will do that. Psychological tactic that Iman Ghazi and especially Andrew Tate use is by exploiting cult dynamics. So what's, what's a cult? A cult basically forms because it creates this in-group, out-group mentality that the world is against you. There's puppet masters. They're, you're in the matrix and you need to break out of it. That's rhetoric that Andrew Tate uses so effectively in his marketing strategy, right? And of course it's effective because there are elements of truth. You know, we do live in a society where we're lied to, where the government doesn't care about us. All of that are nuggets of truth. But then once you go too far in that direction, you start entering a state of psychosis where you're just desperately looking for a group. You're looking for somebody who is a leader and enter Iman Ghazi, someone who swoops in, has now targeted the vulnerable people through these displays of wealth, and then can now use that as a, a vehicle to manipulate their deep psychological desire to feel accepted, to be part of a group, to have the approval of other men in these groups, to have exclusivity, which also discourages critical thinking. That's an extremely important element of cult dynamics. And they're also seeking success in romantic relationships because many of these young men have been unsuccessful or have been rejected by women, feel disenfranchised and emasculated the, by society. Uh, bigger problem here is they're not, it's not the practical advice tips and like actually purchasing something because you want to learn the skills required. It's purchasing it because you think it's going to lead to other things in your life, such as, and you know, everyone uses these tactics to try and sell products. It's like, you know, a better, um, you know, being more attractive to the opposite sex, uh, having more money, um, you know, dressing well, wearing fancy watches, all of this kind of stuff. It just doesn't appeal to me personally. Like I much, I, it, for me, that repels me from purchasing a course from somebody. If I see that kind of stuff, I'm repelled from that it doesn't work on me anymore but then i'm nearly 30 years old i think i've matured a lot in my years doing this whereas a lot of young people are very easily manipulated and um they're searching for something to buy into and believe in and, and a group to be part of and um it just yeah it concerns me that maybe people are manipulated in the wrong ways and they feel like money is the vehicle by which all of these problems will be solved. So now the financial influencer has identified the perfect victim profile, a group of desperate people who are usually younger and typically have very low social, emotional, general intelligence who are privy to fall for these types of scams. And then the final nail in the coffin is something called high pressure sales tactics. So this is basically where you induce urgency to drive desperate impulsive purchases and this is an extremely common theme you can see across all financial scam artists across tiktok if you click the links in their bios there's always a countdown timer there's always an exclusive deal that you have to sign up for in the next hour there's always some type of way in which they're trying to make it seem like super exclusive like they're the ones doing you a favor like they'll say do not type in your email do not type in your email unless you're super serious about making money and being a serious entrepreneur and you feel like oh my gosh this is my opportunity and in your desperation and the emotional turbulence that you're feeling of being disenfranchised being feeling financially unsafe you think this is my final way out and i gotta act now and just to put into perspective for you the actual gravity of this scam, if his numbers are to be believed, Iman is making around $30 million a year in course sales alone. And if you read about the contents of these courses on Reddit, it is the most mundane, idiotic. I did actually do some research on Reddit before this, and there's a ton of highly engaged posts on there. People saying he's a scammer, they've done this, they lost this money. He, you know, there is a lot on there and it's worth a look. 
simpleton information that you can get for free online on YouTube or obviously if you just simply read a book, but a lot of these people don't want to read books. I think one of the best things you can do when you're young is have access to other mentors and people around you. When I started, I had access to other business owners that gave me their time and I learned from them and I gave, they put, put, put me in the right direction. A lot of the course content and stuff can be easily found online. Um, so I always think if you're going to join the group, investment in, a, in yourself, obviously that's totally reasonable um, to want to do that. But, you know, you want to have um, one-on-one help. A thousand dollar course from one of the biggest YouTubers in the, in, you know, in the space, it's just simply not going to have that kind of one-on-one help that you potentially are looking for. It's just never going to happen. And his scams obviously don't stop at courses. He was one of the many idiotic financial influencers who convinced his young, impressionable audience that NFTs was going to be their meal ticket to wealth. And NFTs were obviously just another scam based on the greater fool theory, which is this idea that if you buy an extremely overpriced asset, there will probably be somebody dumber than you who will pay even more for that asset. So you can buy an NFT, a PDF of a hamster for $10,000 in the hopes that there's going to be somebody who comes along dumb enough to pay $15,000. But of course, it's just a scheme that collapsed like every other one of his scams. And so many of these financial guru influencers are the same people who actually told us with a straight face that buying property in the metaverse was going to be equivalent to purchasing property in Manhattan in the early 1900s. If you're my advice for finances, I'm no accountant, so this is not advice actually, but like just put your money into ISIS, uh, S&P 500, and focus your time and attention on building businesses and creating real value and generating real revenue and, you know, buy a house that you live in and then the rest of it can go into S&P 500, low interest, low risk stocks and shares. Don't buy NFTs that you see on the internet. If you want to experiment with crypto, make sure it's a small percentage, 10% or under of your total investment portfolio. Otherwise, keep your money safe and uh, allow your brain the freedom to focus on business activities and providing real value to the world, in my opinion. There is somebody who paid $400,000 for a metaverse property to be neighbors with Snoop Dogg. That's crazy. So this is the level of idiocy and lack of social media literacy that we are dealing with online, which is why we unfortunately live in a world where if you are willing to cheat, lie, steal, and scam, you can become a millionaire. I myself have been poached hundreds of times in my DMs by people who have tried to get me to sell courses and it feels completely morally wrong for me to do that. But it just goes to show you that such a prevalent and successful business model online, you to be on the lookout for it because it is absolutely everywhere. You can get pretty far by doing some pretty shitty stuff, but at the end of the day, that karma always comes back to you. Interesting. I'd love to hear okay, what you guys so I have literally- think about this video and you go through the comments. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, comments supporting this kind of thing. Um, super interesting. If you guys like this kind of content, um, I've never done this kind of content before, but if you guys liked the content, like the video, please. Helps the algorithm. Um, most of my content is more practical, so subscribe if you're actually interested in learning real stuff. Um, and man, that was, uh, that was crazy. I'd love to know what you guys think about that in the comments. If you have your own story about this, yeah, drop a comment down below and let's hear it. I think people would love to hear your side of the story. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.